my setup, um, I'm running a an iPad with uh, just a free app called Jam Up, which was a discovery I found on the um, iPad App Store only for this thing, which was a looper, which. Um, if you've ever seen what about saying live, I use, I use a lot of loops um, just to loop guitars, make atmospheric stuff like that. I plug my guitar in through the iRig 2 software as well, which is really, really handy. Just goes into your headphone jack and then away you go. Um, I use the sampler and I use a few presets on here as well, like the stomp box. Just turn on with a push of a push of a button, which is quite handy. And you can play around all the effects and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that, that, was, that was pretty handy. Um, I run this stuff through a just a standard guitar effects box called an Echo Rec, which is made by a US company called Catlin Bread, which was um, it's a digital kind of recreation of an old effects pedal called the well the Binson Echo Rec, but those things are really pricey because they're basically massive, great big plates of steel that are constantly vibrating. Um, so I kind of went for the budget option, but this thing's great. It's it's really small, really compact, and it does everything you want. Um, it kind of it goes crazy. It has imperfections built into it, which I quite liked. So the start of the set is just basically around just uh, a C note. Okay, so um, my um, side of um, performing with the band is more to do with like the structure of the track and um, kind of deciding when to put each element in the track and how to build it. Um, and um, I've got like a kind of a basic effects selection that I like to put on drums and vocals and that kind of thing. But um, I'll talk you through what I've got. So over here I've got um, this little controller that's got eight different um, kind of channels to it, I suppose. And on each channel, um, I have a different element of the song. So I have, on track one, I have percussion sounds, two, maybe like a vocal sample, three, some more drums, like claps maybe, four and five hi-hats usually, six, um, all the bass lines, seven, some kind of creepy synths and eight normally like a lead vocal or like a strong melodic kind of element and so um, each each kind of knob is like a filter that acts as like a volume control and each um, bottom knob is a delay so I can kind of put more intensity on certain things and um, this is like a kind of master control that I've got um, this is my launch pad which is different elements of tracks that I kind of cycle through um, so I've got like, uh, actually, um, this represents this as well. So number one here is number one here, and two here is two here. So um, it's quite easy, easy to read for me. So um, I can just cycle through and find different elements and turn them up with this controller. But I'll start a track here, and you can see what's happening, which is a vocal part. 
which kind of comes in slowly. So that's the filter and then a delay. So we'll keep that going. Um, this is a kind of synth part. So I, I can kind of shape the track using this. master fader that was uh, master mixing desk so I can filter the whole thing upwards downwards to some delay and then if I want to go to a different section of the track I can just press here so that tends to kick them off and I can turn the bass up And then whenever I want to, I can bring the track back in with a kick drum. my um, kind of on-screen setup. So I've got everything colour coordinated with the song um, and the song title, so I am stands for I'm not. And um, yeah like which each channel and what kind of clips are going on so all my kits are on the same thing. Um, bass all, all the same drums, I like to keep them all similar. So yeah, it's just kind of keeping it as simple as possible, but trying to have fun as well and make it interesting enough to play live, but you don't want to kind of confuse things or kind of scare, scare yourself really. And then when I'm ready, I can just pull up the delay and then end the track. <laughs> 